My name's Lance and welcome to Bundy Bear's Shed. Well, we haven't done a little stew for a while. We have a um, have a shed over East Bundaberg that we had a, a tenant move out of. The, the father bought our tractor workshop, um, Bundaberg Field Service. Um, he rented our shed office for a few years after buying the business, but as times allowed him, he's, he's made other plans now, so we ended up with an empty shed. and. I run the workshop out of it for probably eight or nine years and then um, Justin bought the workshop and he ran it out of there and, and yeah, you, you could certainly see that it had been a workshop. Um, bits of oil splattered up the wall and things like that and things bumped into his tractors. And, but anyway, so we decided to tidy the shed up and, and put it out there for release or, or resale. Um, the market in Australia at the moment for rental sheds and that is, it's, it's quite poor, there's not a lot of money around, not a lot of people changing um, premises, so anyway we have this shed, um, we've got it tucked away, we own it so there's no urgency to it, but um, we've tried to turn it around within about a month or so and have it back out on the market, so so we've put a nice new colour bond front on the shed and um, we put a new kitchen, vanity units and all that sort of thing in and, and We've had the whole floors pressure cleaned and painted the showroom, and, and it's a it's come up quite nice, but it's certainly taken a lot of time. So I haven't spent much time at the moment in Bundy Bear's shed, and the time I have spent, I've been putting up the pallet racking and all that I've showed you a quick um, bite of a week or so ago, and so with everything coming out of there, there was stuff there that we had tucked away that we brought over to our had to come to my home shed, Bundy Bear's shed here, and um, it's been a big job. I've been weeks on it now, and um, we've got some of the pallet racking up. We're about two thirds of the way through the pallet racking. The I've still got stuff parked outside the shed, waiting to go inside. And um, as I clear along the wall, I've, <laughs> I've I've often just put things along the wall, you know, get them out of the road, give you a bit of clear space. But now everything has to come off the wall, be sorted pallet rack and go up along the wall and then put the stuff that you've decided to keep or, um, or clutter together in one group um, back up on a pallet and um, it, it gives us a chance to go four or five high up the wall now and uh, look in long term it's a good thing it's going to be a great asset to Bundy Bear Shed give us a lot more working room but the process of getting it done is dragging on a bit it's taken quite a while and well, that's all right. I, I just haven't had time to, to machine much or do too much else. Um, I, I took on a job from a friend of mine, Tim, and, you know, making the field marshal wick holder. And the only machining I've been doing in between working, sorting the shed out, is making Tim's field marshal wick holder. And we finished that yesterday. And I'll tell you the truth, I was glad to get it done um, because the, the time it took it was always on the back of your mind and the time it took to do it, um, you know, I think about nine and a half, ten hours all up by the time you, you fiddle with it and try, and try and get it accurate and things like that. So um, that's gone now, that, um, that job's out of my hair, so hopefully we can concentrate more on getting everything shifted and hopefully within a couple of weeks we'll be back up and running like we used to be. But um, in doing Tim's um, field marshal, <laughs> Um, wick holder, well the compressor blew up yesterday so I thought I'd pull the top off. Um, it was, it has been dicky for a while, um, sometimes when it went to start you'd hear the motor sort of rrr, rrr, pausing and, and going and so I, I had backed the pressure off um, so it had an easier start but I had a look yesterday when it wouldn't go anymore and um, it kept um, tripping the breaker and the whole top of the motor where the capacitors, start and run capacitors are, has sort of melted a bit, so um, it's, it's a chuck away job. And so what we've decided to do is we have three phase power over in the corner there, which is 415 volt in Australia, and um, this morning I've been and bought a, a 42 CFM three phase air compressor to go in there, and it has to come up from Brisbane, so Hopefully it'll be up in the next few days, so um, in the corner where the drills and that are, I'll have to have a bit of a shuffle there as well now to fit a bigger compressor in and, 
Um, to run the new blast cabinet we bought a few weeks ago, um, I've run a 20 CFM compressor and a, I think it was a 12 or 15, a little one. And that would just keep up, but it could have done with a bit more. So, so we've taken this opportunity to buy a 42 CFM, um, and that's, that's free air delivery um, compressor to put up the end there to help run the blast cabinet better. And when I've been sanding tractors and things, I've always had to wait for air to be able to go because the, the sanders use quite a lot of air. So, so anyway, we, we've upgraded that. Hopefully, um, it'll be here this week, like I say, and, and we'll get a bit of a run on it. And another thing that buggered up, they are, I'm having a reckon good time lately. Um, I, I'm going to be passion fingers if <laughs> every night I touch this stuff. But yeah, the, um, I've had a Abbott Nashby grinder with a, um, a multi-tool attachment, you know, the disc on the side then a sanding belt. And um, a little while ago it blew a start capacitor. So I went and got one and we put one on and away it went again. But um, anyway, over the last few uses it started to slow up a bit and I thought, oh, that capacitor was playing up again. But the last time the capacitor, um, uh, uh, the motor would start and run, but it just didn't have the go that it should have. It, it, um, it just slowed up, it didn't have the power, you could stall it easy. So I put a new, ca new capacitor in and off she went again. So I thought, well, similar problem. So I went and bought a new capacitor and put in it. Well, no good. But the thing's still slow and runs, and, and when you hold your hand on the top of it there, um, it's getting hot, so there's a, there's a winding, there's an electrical problem in there, so, so it looks like we're going to have to bush that and buy a new bench grinder, a new 8 inch bench grinder. But um, in coming from the other shop, there was an 8 inch bench grinder, a Makita brand, over there. So this morning, it's where, where, the, where it bolts onto the base, it's slopped around, the bolts are falling out, and two bolts to undo to get in there and fix it, and no one's ever bothered. It's, it just amazes me that people could put up with that. But, um, and every time you went to use it, I noticed, um, well, see, I hadn't been in the shed for a few years to use anything, but when I went to start it to see what was working and what's not, the bloody thing's vibrating around and dangerous as anything. But um, anyway, I've, I've got that off on the back of the forklift now, and um, I'll lock tight the bolts in, and it does run, and I'll see if I can put this uh, multi-tool attachment on the side of the grinder. and get that underway again. And so, so yeah, we've had a bit of a wrecking good time. It's been an expensive time. Um, with buying the cabinet, then the compressor shitting itself, and the grinder shitting itself. <laughs> so, anyway, you have runs like that, and then you, and then you have a couple of years without everything failing on you. So it's just, just run of the mill, how it goes. But um, I, I had serviced up all the bandsaw. I, I threw a little clip on there a week ago about um, Bozo hopping on the forklift and, and taking a shortcut and rolling the bandsaw on its side. Well, the bandsaw's up and running nicely. Um, I've reserviced it. I've got new coolant in it. It's going well. And this last week, I've even gone and bought a, um, uh, a couple of new fine um, blades for it. Now, the place where I bought it, they couldn't supply the bands anymore. So we had to do a measure up and get the band. So I found a place in Brisbane that, that did the bands of, um, oh, I can't think of the length. It's, it's probably written here now. I'll refer to my notes. Um, yeah, 210 millimetres by 19 millimetres. And it's a variable pitch, you know, 10 to 14 um, for metal. And I usually like to find pitch blades. It um, cuts a bit slower, but it's, it's better for the thicker steel if you'd like to do that. So. Anyway, we took the opportunity to buy three of those just as a backup. I thought, well, it looks like down the future there might be a bit of a problem getting them. Um, so I bought three new bandsaw blades to, to put over there, but the other one, it's got a little bit of a click in it, and I found in the past, once your bandsaw blade gets a little bit of a click in it, it's often a tiny little crack somewhere, and um, it's not long before it, it, it breaks and you have to do something else. So, so anyway, we bought a few of them. And while we were spending, <laughs> I didn't know if it was going to shit itself. Um, yeah, we bought a, a little can of Tap Magic. I've seen it around, and I've got other brands of it, but I've, I've never tried this. So I'll give that a run just just because I saw it. And we have an aluminium one too. Um, I hope you can see that. 
and they're only little cans, um, not expensive, but anyway, I've, I've got a, quite an assortment of this sort of stuff now, so we'll, we'll play with that and try and keep it off the floor. And now Bruce Witham, I'm not sure whether, he, sorry Bruce, I'm not sure whether we should say Witham or Witham, um, in West Australia, he's got a YouTube channel and he does a lot of machining and getting out broken bolts and studs and all that and he's a, a pretty cluey old bloke. Um, I've learned a lot from Bruce over the time, just watching his, his um, uh, just his, his tips on Facebook and his videos on how he does things. So um, I've picked up a, quite a few things off Bruce and one of his things was these centering rules. Now, it'll be good if I could actually get there. There you go. You can just see the zero in the centre there. And so he was showing us how to use them. You know, you, you, you bring a piece of steel in 50 mil each side and there's your zero. So it's a good little centering thing. And they actually do them in in 150 mil and 300 millimetres. So I, I got on to Bruce and he gave me the part numbers and the part number for the their Toledo brand and the 30 centimetre one, which would be a foot roughly in the old in miles an hour anyway, is um, 300 SP for 300 millimetre and the 150 is 150 SP and I, I, I got a supplier of these and I, I bought two of them, you know two big ones, two little ones and, and there was another company and the rep come in and I asked him for a price on them and um, he said oh, I'll find out for you and anyway they just turned up, he'd ordered them. So anyway, I had three weeks now. So <laughs> the price was very similar to what I paid. So it, um, it didn't matter too much. But um, so yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to having to play with them. It's a it's a great idea. Um, on a piece of 100 mil, you go 50 mil, line up your 250s, and zero is right in the centre. So it doesn't get much easier than that. And I wasn't aware of these until Bruce showed them on his. Um, I'm not sure whether it was on his YouTube channel or on his Facebook page, but. Um, Oh, it's not his Facebook page, it's actually the Machining YouTube page that um, I'm a member of. So, so yeah, thanks Bruce, I'll, I'll have a play with that. and um, Yeah, I can see that being handy right from the start. Um, you might find a bit of a noise outside. Well, it's blowing, blowing its ass off. Yeah, it's um, the first day of winter was just the other day and, and winter's come right on time this year. Um, and when I say winter, some of you blokes will just laugh, but it gets to 9 degrees. And um, nine, I think today is 9 to 23 degrees C. And um, yeah, we're running around. Um, well, I was nearly going to put shoes on, actually. That's how cold it was. Um, I've just still got me, me shorts and me safety thongs on. But um, in that breeze, you, you go around the corner of Bundy Bear's shed there, and well, it'll blow your hat off. And it's, it's like a mother-in-law's bloody breath, eh? Hey, it is cold. <laughs> and, um, and yeah, yeah, I can leave the back door of Bundy Bear Shed shut and, and it's quite a cosy spot to be and the dogs all sleep in the sun in the doorway and it's alright but um, but yeah you'll hear the door banging a little bit out the back there and the shed probably won't creak so much today because the wind will keep it that cold it won't want to expand or contract but the doors bang and rattle and things like that so we'll, um, we'll see what we can come up with today for everyone. And um, yeah, I'll, I'll probably try and fix this grinder. I might film a little bit of that, but I haven't got an awful lot of content for the kangaroo stew apart from having a yarn, um, mainly because we haven't got projects on the go. And the project I did have on the go was the field marshal wick holder, which um, it'll be in a video probably just before this one, I'd say. But anyway, it'll, it'll be in a little series of its own. There's three parts to the series, and it's done now, so. Um, so anyway, look, we'll, we'll have a look, see if I can get this grinder going, and that'll save me buying another one. And the rest of it, I might just have a little bit of a walk around the shed. I've, I have cleaned up a little bit compared with the other day, but not a lot. Um, we, another thing that's taken time out of Bundy Bear's shed is that um, my mum and, and my dad, and my parents, um, they both turned 80 last week. And Dad's three days older than Mum, believe it or not. And um, so they they turned 80. Dad turned 80 on the 23rd of May, and Mum turned 80 on the 26th of May. And, and it's a fair old milestone. Um, 
next year is their 60th wedding anniversary. And, um, but the family decided um, to come up from Sydney. I have a sister and brother-in-law and nieces and nephews and all that down south. And, and um, so, yeah, they flew in for the occasion. So um, last weekend, we, well, we didn't do much in the shed here at all. Um, but we had a, had a nice time. Um, sister flew up, then her, her hubby come in from Darwin. Um, he'd been away on a business trip and flew in from Darwin. So we had him from Sydney and Darwin. And then, um, oh, we went out for dinner and you know, the girls went out for breakfast. And, and then we had a bit of a party at the restaurant for mum and dad and you know, had the cake and all the, all the hoo-ha, which was good. Um, you only 80 once and some of us might not even bloody see 80. So, um, but their health's fairly good. Um, yeah, the old bloke's looking at getting a new hip shortly, and um, but Mum's sailing along okay. And um, but then after that, uh, my niece and her bloke Josh, um, they come and stayed at our house for the week after. So all last week, um, yeah, we played. Well, there we go, back again. That was just the people um, that we bought the compressor off, just confirming a few details. So hopefully we see it in a in a few days, and yeah, we're up and racing again. But um, yeah, I, th oh, I think where I was was that um, yeah, niece and her bloke come to stay with us. And in Australia, we have the state of origin, um, state of origin football on. It's it's three games between um, Queensland and New South Wales, which are two neighbouring states. And oh, we get up each other about the footy. Um, I'm not that mad keen of a footy bloke, but um, yeah, usually once a year. Me and my mates all bloody get together and have a bit of a piss up and 10 or 20 quiet beers and watch the footy game and yeah, have a bit of a dribble on about it. But um, the, um, with the nephew and niece up, we, they're from Sydney, so um, they were keen to drive some tractors and that. So we got the tractors out in the paddock and had a drive and had a play around. And Normally I get to bed pretty early, but yeah, we sat up having a couple of little sippies till 10 o'clock most nights. So they went home on Friday. So Friday night I went to bed early. <laughs> Getting old, eh? One time it wouldn't have worried me at all. But, um, but with the footy, um, Queensland, the state where we live, it's maroon, and um, um, Sydney, where niece and nephew come from, that's New South Wales, and they're blue, and they're called the cockroaches and we're the cane toads. So um, anyway, I come home from work on Wednesday, and. You know, they had the fire going, ready to watch the footy, and I walked into the pool room up there and they had bloody blue shit everywhere. <laughs> the bastards. <laughs> but anyway, it was good, it was good fun. Uh, we had blue tablecloths, um, blue plates on the table, uh, a New South Wales um, table runner, um, streamers, blue balloons <laughs> everywhere. And, um, yeah, so anyway, I had to sit there watching the footy in... Um, in a, in a blue surrounds, which I'm unaccustomed to. But the last, we got the last laugh, Queensland won that game. <laughs> so anyway, it all works out, it's all in fun. But, um, but look, stay tuned, we'll see if we can find a little bit of content to put in here. Um, we're, like I say, we are running thin on it because we, we just haven't had the time at the moment to do this. We've been putting, roll, putting big door runners in at the other shed and we've been cleaning windows and cleaning concrete. And, uh, we, so you've been full on, I've been taking days off work and my spare days I've been racing over there helping tradesmen and things like that. So, so look, stay tuned, we'll see if we can just put a little bit, of, a little bit of something in here, I'm not sure what it's going to be, but we'll have a scoop around the shed and have a look and find what we can find for you. Well this is the, that's the band saw over there and we're starting to get the bays sorted out and up in that one over there We've got 44 gallons cut off as pigeon holes. The one on the right is just for rounds, bits of pipe and just off cuts and things. And the one on the left is, yeah, obviously for rectangles and squares and things like that. Then under, under the bench, the drum on the left hand side there, that's for long lengths of, of, um, of mainly steel or long lengths of anything. They're a bit long to fit on the, on the pallet racking at the moment. And then up over, Up over here we've started getting some of the rounds sorted out and if I get this ladder out of the way a bit we've got a little bit of stock ahead of us there but I'm always looking for rounds and 
bits and pieces like that. Um, then up here we have our supply of hex bar, bits of hex. I, I can't walk past a bit of hex without picking it up and bringing it home. We have brass, um, yeah, brass pipes, brass tubes and pipes, and then bits of offcuts. And oh, coming back here between the two, we actually have our blocks of aluminium, um, rounds of aluminium, and there's a few big chunks in there. Um, if I can just find a couple without wrecking the whole show. There's a few hunks like that and in Bundaberg they make a plane called the Jabiru and they're off cuts from the Jabiru when they, they machine their own cylinder heads and all that sort of thing. So I don't know what grade it is but they're pretty good stuff. But um, yeah, so we, the, the whole idea is that we're just getting organised so we can, we can find things that we weren't real sure of where they were before. We've got bits of angle to sort, yeah that bay we have to sort. And then on the bandsaw, when we come back out here, um, I've spent quite a bit of time on this runner, on this support coming out here. And the idea of the support is so if I put a couple of longer bits of steel in to cut, they're supported at the end. And coming out the other side, out through there, there'll be another one. And it's on the it's down there on the ground now, that big piece of angle iron. So, so that'll get set up and I've taken a lot of time with the level and made sure if I put a big length of steel in, um, the steel will be supported evenly so it cuts nicely. And with servicing the bandsaw, we've actually, all this part, the whole head turns, and this part here, can be turned now for a 45 or a 30 or whatever we like. And the coolant I was using, the coolant I was using in the bandsaw had gone all waxy. So anyway, we're putting automotive glycol in there now. So yeah, time will tell whether automotive glycol is a good thing or not, but I thought I'd give it a try. But over the next day or so, if I get a chance, um, all this here will be tidied up so I can actually service things in the hoist bay but we are getting there slowly and I'll try not to hit too many things and we're getting our the tin shelves have come in there now and we're slowly getting stuff put into them but we still have a lot to do but yeah all in all we'll get there now this is a grinder that was from the other shop. This isn't buggered this one. But um, yeah, it seems to start and run, no worries. But this was what I was telling you about. <laughs> I just couldn't believe that you'd still use that and not actually just pop it off and, and repair that. So that's what our next little job will be. We'll pop that off, we'll lock tight those screws in and we'll see if we can fit that multi-tool to it. We've pulled the bottom off the grinder and what's happened is there's a bolt in here that was stuck through there and there should have been a bolt in the nut there and for some reason just with vibration over time there's another one over there um, so yeah the capacitor was sitting in its right place that's good but what we'll do we'll just find a little metric screw and we might lock tight them on, give the whole little show a clean up, and away we go. I was just lucky that um, oh, and I didn't want to go inside and touch a, touch something it shouldn't have touched anyway. So anyway, I'll go and find a screw. Well, these bolts here, we've undone them, and I went in for my secret metric nut stash. I thought Makita, Japanese metric thread. Well, it's not. It's just a normal old UNC. 
So I don't know how that works, but anyway, that's we're happy with all that. I'll give this a bit of a clean up with um, some brake lean, a bit of brake cleaner. Today it's grinder cleaner, but that's okay too. These bolts only just stick through long enough. Actually, that other one doesn't quite stick through long enough. So, for the moment, I'll pop enough on there. Make sure there's no wires caught under there. Because that just wouldn't be nice, would it? And what we're going to do is put a little bit of Loctite little dab will do you. A little dab will do you there. A spring washer. Come on. And there's enough. Now on this other side here, I haven't actually checked that when we go tight that the the nut won't or the bolt at the back won't want to turn on us. Which is the law of averages says if we haven't checked it it will want to turn on us. So I'll we'll hold a bit of sideways movement down this way on it to try and lock the threads just a little bit. This one doesn't want to play the game. Come on. Oh, yes we are. Let's see if we can get a bit of tension on this. Righty tidy. Lefty Lucy. So we go righty tidy. You all do that, don't you? Righty tidy. A bit more righty tidy. And look at that, that's lovely. So I'll pop the start and run capacitor back in. Does that turn a little bit? All right. Now the bottom just screws on. Mainly just to keep the rubbish out. I'll give that a tidy up. We'll put it back, set him up the normal way, and then we'll see if we can, um, yeah, put the grinder attachment on the other side or the multi-tool. There you go. That's it. All right, what's the story now? The story is, undo this, take the stone off, and see if the multi-tool fits. So we'll work our way on that for a little while. Well, that's the bracket. But um, this is nice and free, so that's not why the motor burnt out at all. And it just picks up three screws here, and a drum goes on there, like it's on a... Um, like it's on a grinding wheel. And funny enough, both grinders had the same thread. Now you'd think with an engineer designing it, we'd all have to have different ones probably, but no, they've, they've slipped up there, they? having the same bolts for both. But they won't sell many parts now. Give it a nip. Nip him up there and nip this one up here. And that should be alright, I reckon. I'll go and get the rest of it and then hook him up. That's the drum on. It's just held on like a stone. And then to cover that and keep the dirt out. 
we have a little plate. There's also a sticky disc that can sit over that. So try and get these done up without hopping in the sh without happening in the light too much. Right, then there's a, there's a sticky pad that sits on here. I'll see if I have a new one of them. I can't seem to find one, but we won't worry about that just for the moment. And look at this, a brand new belt. No expense spared in Bundy Bear's shed. Check there's a direction of rotation. Yes, there is. So that way, yep, we're good. Give it a run and see how we go. All right, I'll go and get a lead. We'll hook a lead up and we can check this. There's a little or a button here for want of a better word that can line the belt up true with this runner here. Right, we put a bit of power up it. There's still a couple of brackets here we can put on yet. Yeah, for, as a guide for sharpening chisels and things. I've sharpened lathe tools, just dressed them on there a little bit, but I don't use many HSS tools anymore. They're mainly carbide, so there you go, hang on to your hat. If I start glowing, just pull the cord apart, eh? Well, there you go, that's a tool I've been missing. So, hopefully this will go back on the stand where the Abbott and Ashby went. And it might get me out of buying a new one for a little while, but the run we're having, I don't know, I better stay friends with the tool shop. Well, there you go. <laughs> Not a lot of content this week, I'm sorry about that. There's just other things are taking over at the moment, which is how it goes. Um, we've got the grinder fixed with the linisher on the side of it, so, I have been missing that linisher. There's, um, there's a couple of door tracks or door guides for the other shed. With, it's got really big sliding doors on them. And the doors are about, oh, I think they're about 25 foot wide. And about, look, they'll be 20 foot high, um, five, six meters high. And um, they have rollers on the top. and. On the bottom they've got guides and over the time they've been hit with the forklift and broken and bashed so we're going to tidy that up a bit but but so to have that grinder done that'll that'll help me i'll tidy up the surfaces before i weld and go from there but look thanks for watching um like if you like subscribe um we usually try and get something out every week or so we try for every week but life gets in the road and when life gets in the road you go with it because you only get one run but um but thanks for watching and I'll catch up with you later, right? Eh?